Aerosol, Wikipedia article audio. An aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air or another gas. Aerosols can be natural or anthropogenic. Examples of natural aerosols are fog, dust, forest exudates, and geyser steam. Examples of anthropogenic aerosols are haze, particulate air pollutants and smoke. The liquid or solid particles have diameter mostly smaller than 1 mm or so, larger particles with a significant settling speed make the mixture a suspension, but the distinction is not clear-cut. In general conversation, aerosol usually refers to an aerosol spray that delivers a consumer product from a kin or similar container. Other technological applications of aerosols include dispersal of pesticides, medical treatment of respiratory illnesses, and convincing technology. Diseases can also spread by means of small droplets in the breath, also called aerosols. Aerosol science covers generation and removal of aerosols, technological application of aerosols, effects of aerosols on the environment and people, and a wide variety of other topics. Definitions Size Distribution An aerosol is defined as a suspension system of solid or liquid particles in a gas. An aerosol includes both the particles and the suspending gas, which is usually air. Frederick G. Donnan presumably first used the term aerosol during World War I to describe an aero solution, clouds of microscopic particles in air. This term developed analogously to the term hydrosol, a colloid system with water as the dispersing medium. Primary aerosols contain particles introduced directly into the gas, secondary aerosols form through gas to particle conversion. Various types of aerosol, classified according to physical form and how they were generated, include dust, fume, mist, smoke and fog. There are several measures of aerosol concentration. Environmental science and health often uses the mass concentration, defined as the mass of particulate matter per unit volume with units such as μg slash m3. Also commonly used is the number concentration, the number of particles per unit volume with units such as number slash m3 or number slash cm3. The size of particles has a major influence on their properties and the aerosol particle radius or diameter is a key property used to characterize aerosols. Aerosols vary in their dispersity. A monodisperse aerosol, producible in the laboratory, contains particles of uniform size. Most aerosols, however, as polydisperse colloidal systems, exhibit a range of particle sizes. Liquid droplets are almost always nearly spherical, but scientists use an equivalent diameter to characterize the properties of various shapes of solid particles, some very irregular. The equivalent diameter is the diameter of a spherical particle with the same value of some physical property as the irregular particle. The equivalent volume diameter is defined as the diameter of a sphere of the same volume as that of the irregular particle. Also commonly used is the aerodynamic diameter. Physics For a monodisperse aerosol, a single number the particle diameter suffices to describe the size of the particles. However, more complicated particle size distribution s describe the sizes of the particles in a polydisperse aerosol. This distribution defines the relative amounts of particles, sorted according to size. One approach to defining the particle size distribution uses a list of the sizes of every particle in a sample. However, this approach proves tedious to ascertain in aerosols with millions of particles and awkward to use. 
Another approach splits the complete size range into intervals and finds the number of particles in each interval. One then can visualize these data in a histogram with the area of each bar representing the proportion of particles in that size bin, usually normalized by dividing the number of particles in a bin by the width of the intervals so that the area of each bar is proportionate to the number of particles in the size range that it represents. If the width of the bins tends to zero, one gets the frequency function. Where Terminal velocity of a particle in a fluid Therefore, the area under the frequency curve between two sizes A and B represents the total fraction of the particles in that size range. It can also be formulated in terms of the total number density N. Assuming spherical aerosol particles, the aerosol surface area per unit volume is given by the second moment. Aerodynamic diameter And the third moment gives the total volume concentration of the particles. Dynamics One also usefully can approximate the particle size distribution using a mathematical function. The normal distribution usually does not suitably describe particle size distributions in aerosols because of the skewness associated a long tail of larger particles. Also for a quantity that varies over a large range, as many aerosol sizes do, the width of the distribution implies negative particle sizes, clearly not physically realistic. However, the normal distribution can be suitable for some aerosols, such as test aerosols, certain pollen grains and spores. Coagulation A more widely chosen log normal distribution gives the number frequency as where Dynamics regimes The log normal distribution has no negative values, can cover a wide range of values, and fits many observed size distributions reasonably well. Other distributions sometimes used to characterize particle size include, the rosin ramler distribution, applied to coarsely dispersed dusts and sprays, the Nuki Yamatanasawa distribution, for sprays of extremely broad size ranges, the power function distribution, occasionally applied to atmospheric aerosols, the exponential distribution, applied to powdered materials, and for cloud droplets, the Krigian mason distribution. For low values of the Reynolds number, true for most aerosol motion, Stokes' law describes the force of resistance on a solid spherical particle in a fluid. However, Stokes' law is only valid when the velocity of the gas at the surface of the particle is zero. For small particles that characterize aerosols, however, this assumption fails. To account for this failure, one can introduce the Cunningham correction factor, always greater than one. Including this factor, one finds the relation between the resisting force on a particle and its velocity. Where? This allows us to calculate the terminal velocity of a particle undergoing gravitational settling in still air. Neglecting buoyancy effects, we find. Partitioning. Where? Activation. The terminal velocity can also be derived for other kinds of forces. If Stokes' law holds, then the resistance to motion is directly proportional to speed. The constant of proportionality is the mechanical mobility of a particle. Moment method, modal slash sectional method, and quadrature method of moments slash Taylor series expansion method of moments, and Monte Carlo method B equals V F D equals C C three Pi eta D equals 
A particle traveling at any reasonable initial velocity approaches its terminal velocity exponentially with an e-folding time equal to the relaxation time. As test aerosols for calibrating instruments, performing research, and testing sampling equipment and air filters, to deliver deodorants, paints, and other consumer products and sprays, for dispersal and agricultural application of pesticides, for medical treatment of respiratory disease, and, in fuel injection systems and other combustion technology. V, T, equals, V, F, V, F, V, 0, E, T, Tau, E. Solution to the General Dynamic Equation Generation and Applications Stability of generated aerosol particles Detection Where Aerosol spray, atomizer nozzle or nebulizer, electrospray, electronic cigarette, vibrating orifice aerosol generator To account for the effect of the shape of non-spherical particles a correction factor known as the dynamic shape factor is applied to Stokes' law. It is defined as the ratio of the resistive force of the irregular particle to that of a spherical particle with the same volume and velocity. Chi equals Fd 3 pi eta v d e where aerosol mass spectrometer Differential Mobility Analyzer, Electrical Aerosol Spectrometer, Aerodynamic Particle Sizer, Aerodynamic Aerosol Classifier, Wide Range Particle Spectrometer, Micro Orifice Uniform Deposit Impactor, Condensation Particle Counter, Epiphaniometer, Electrical Low Pressure Impactor, Aerosol Particle Mass Analyzer, Centrifugal Particle Mass Analyzer The aerodynamic diameter of an irregular particle is defined as the diameter of the spherical particle with a density of 1000 kg m3 and the same settling velocity as the irregular particle. Neglecting the slip correction, the particle settles at the terminal velocity proportional to the square of the aerodynamic diameter, dA where in situ observations this equation gives the aerodynamic diameter one can apply the aerodynamic diameter to particulate pollutants or to inhaled drugs to predict where in the respiratory tract such particles deposit pharmaceutical companies typically use aerodynamic diameter not geometric diameter to characterize particles in inhalable drugs. The previous discussion focused on single aerosol particles. In contrast, aerosol dynamics explains the evolution of complete aerosol populations. The concentrations of particles will change over time as a result of many processes. External processes that move particles outside a volume of gas under study include diffusion, gravitational settling, and electric charges and other external forces that cause particle migration. A second set of processes internal to a given volume of gas include particle formation, evaporation, chemical reaction, and coagulation. Remote Sensing Approach Size Selective Sampling Atmospheric A differential equation called the aerosol general dynamic equation characterizes the evolution of the number density of particles in an aerosol due to these processes. N, I, T, equals, N, I, Q, plus, D, P, I, plus, N, I, T, G, R, O, W, T, H, plus, N, I, T, C, O, A, G, Q, F, N, 
I equals dash backslash nabla backslash p dot n backslash math plus backslash nabla backslash p dot d backslash nabla plus backslash left plus backslash left backslash nabla backslash p dot backslash math n. Change in time equals convective transport plus Brownian diffusion plus gas particle interactions plus coagulation plus migration by external forces. Where? As particles and droplets in an aerosol collide with one another, they may undergo coalescence or aggregation. This process leads to a change in the aerosol particle size distribution with the mode increasing in diameter as total number of particles decreases. On occasion, particles may shatter apart into numerous smaller particles, however, this process usually occurs primarily in particles too large for consideration as aerosols. Effects the Knudsen number of the particle defined three different dynamical regimes that govern the behavior of an aerosol. Where, lambda, is the mean free path of the suspending gas and, d, is the diameter of the particle. For particles in the free molecular regime, kn1, particles small compared to the mean free path of the suspending gas. In this regime, Particles interact with the suspending gas through a series of ballistic collisions with gas molecules. As such, they behave similarly to gas molecules, tending to follow streamlines and diffusing rapidly through Brownian motion. The mass flux equation in the free molecular regime is where a is the particle radius, p and p a are the pressures far from the droplet and at the surface of the droplet respectively, k b is the Boltzmann constant, t is the temperature, c a is mean thermal velocity and alpha is mass accommodation coefficient. The derivation of this equation assumes constant pressure and constant diffusion coefficient. Particles are in the continuum regime when kn1. In this regime, the particles are big compared to the mean free path of the suspending gas, meaning that the suspending gas acts as a continuous fluid flowing round the particle. The molecular flux in this regime is where a is the radius of the particle a, m a is the molecular mass of the particle a, Dab is the diffusion coefficient between particles A and B, R is the ideal gas constant, T is the temperature, and PA and PS are the pressures at infinite and at the surface respectively. The transition regime contains all the particles in between the free molecular and continuum regimes or Kn1. The forces experienced by a particle are a complex combination of interactions with individual gas molecules and macroscopic interactions. The semi-empirical equation describing mass flux is where I can't is the mass flux in the continuum regime. This formula is called the fuchs sutigen interpolation formula. These equations do not take into account the heat release effect. Aerosol partitioning theory governs condensation on and evaporation from an aerosol surface, respectively. Condensation of mass causes the mode of the particle size distributions of the aerosol to increase, conversely, evaporation causes the mode to decrease. Nucleation is the process of forming aerosol mass from the condensation of a gaseous precursor, specifically a vapor. Net condensation of the vapor requires supersaturation, a partial pressure greater than its vapor pressure. This can happen for three reasons. There are two types of nucleation processes. Gases preferentially condense onto surfaces of pre-existing aerosol particles, known as heterogeneous nucleation. This process causes the diameter at the mode of particle size distribution to increase with constant number concentration. With sufficiently high supersaturation and no suitable surfaces, 
particles may condense in the absence of a pre-existing surface, known as homogeneous nucleation. This results in the addition of very small, rapidly growing particles to the particle size distribution. Water coats particles in an aerosols, making them activated, usually in the context of forming a cloud droplet. Following the Kelvin equation, smaller particles need a higher ambient relative humidity to maintain equilibrium than larger particles do. The following formula gives relative humidity at equilibrium. Where, P, S, is the saturation vapor pressure above a particle at equilibrium, P0 is the saturation vapor pressure and S is the saturation ratio. Kelvin equation for saturation vapor pressure above a curved surface is Works cited Where RP droplet radius, sigma surface tension of droplet, rho density of liquid, m molar mass, t temperature, and r molar gas constant There are no general solutions to the general dynamic equation Common methods used to solve the general dynamic equation include People generate aerosols for various purposes, including Some devices for generating aerosols are Stability of nanoparticle agglomerates is critical for estimating size distribution of aerosolized particles from nanopowders or other sources. At nanotechnology workplaces, Workers can be exposed via inhalation to potentially toxic substances during handling and processing of nanomaterials. Nanoparticles in the air often form agglomerates due to attractive interparticle forces, such as van der Waals force or electrostatic force if the particles are charged. As a result, aerosol particles are usually observed as agglomerates rather than individual particles. For exposure and risk assessments of airborne nanoparticles, it is important to know about the size distribution of aerosols. When inhaled by humans, particles with different diameters are deposited in varied locations of the central and periphery respiratory system. Particles in nanoscale have been shown to penetrate the air-blood barrier in lungs and be translocated into secondary organs in the human body such as the brain, heart, and liver. Therefore, the knowledge on stability of nanoparticle agglomerates is important for predicting the size of aerosol particles, which helps assess the potential risk of them to human bodies. Different experimental systems have been established to test the stability of airborne particles and their potentials to deagglomerate under various conditions. A comprehensive system recently reported by Ding and Rydiker is able to maintain robust aerosolization process and generate aerosols with stable number concentration and mean size from nanopowders. The deagglomeration potential of various airborne nanomaterials can be also studied using critical orifices. This process was also investigated by Stalmec ETAL. In addition, an impact fragmentation device was developed to investigate bonding energies between particles. A standard deagglomeration testing procedure could be foreseen with the developments of the different types of existing systems. The likeliness of deagglomeration of aerosol particles in occupational settings can be possibly ranked for different nanomaterials if a reference method is available. For this purpose, Interlaboratory comparison of testing results from different setups could be launched in order to explore the influences of system characteristics on properties of generated nanomaterials aerosols. Aerosol can either be measured in situ or with remote sensing techniques. Some available in situ measurement techniques include Remote sensing approaches include Particles can deposit in the nose, mouth, pharynx, and larynx, deeper within the respiratory tract, or in the alveolar region.
the location of deposition of aerosol particles within the respiratory system strongly determines the health effects of exposure to such aerosols. This phenomenon led people to invent aerosol samplers that select a subset of the aerosol particles that reach certain parts of the respiratory system. Examples of these subsets of the particle size distribution of an aerosol, important in occupational health, include the inhalable, thoracic, and respirable fractions. The fraction that can enter each part of the respiratory system depends on the deposition of particles in the upper parts of the airway. The inhalable fraction of particles, defined as the proportion of particles originally in the air that can enter the nose or mouth, depends on external wind speed and direction and on the particle size distribution by aerodynamic diameter. The thoracic fraction is the proportion of the particles in ambient aerosol that can reach the thorax or chest region. The respirable fraction is the proportion of particles in the air that can reach the alveolar region. To measure the respirable fraction of particles in air, a pre-collector is used with a sampling filter. The pre-collector excludes particles as the airways remove particles from inhaled air. The sampling filter collects the particles for measurement. It is common to use cyclonic separation for the pre-collector, but other techniques include impactors, horizontal elutriators, and large pore membrane filters. Two alternative size-selective criteria, often used in atmospheric monitoring, are PM10 and PM2.5. PM10 is defined by ISO as particles which pass through a size-selective inlet with a 50% efficiency cutoff at 10 μm aerodynamic diameter and PM2.5 as particles which pass through a size-selective inlet with a 50% efficiency cutoff at 2.5 μm aerodynamic diameter. PM10 corresponds to the thoracic convention as defined in ISO 7708-1995, Clause 6, PM2.5 corresponds to the high-risk respirable convention as defined in ISO 7708-1995, 7.1. The United States Environmental Protection Agency replaced the older standards for particulate matter based on total suspended particulate with another standard based on PM10 in 1987 and then introduced standards for PM2.5 in 1997. Several types of atmospheric aerosol have a significant effect on Earth's climate, volcanic, desert dust, sea salt, that originating from biogenic sources and human-made. Volcanic aerosol forms in the stratosphere after an eruption as droplets of sulfuric acid that can prevail for up to two years, and reflect sunlight, lowering temperature. Desert dust, mineral particles blown to high altitudes, absorb heat and may be responsible for inhibiting storm cloud formation. Human-made sulfate aerosols, primarily from burning oil and coal, affect the behavior of clouds. Although all hydrometeors, solid and liquid, can be described as aerosols, a distinction is commonly made between such dispersions containing activated drops and crystals, and aerosol particles. The atmosphere of Earth contains aerosols of various types and concentrations, including quantities of Aerosols can be found in urban ecosystems in various forms, for example The presence of aerosols in the Earth's atmosphere can influence its climate, as well as human health. Sun photometer, LIDAR, imaging spectroscopy Natural and organic materials, fine dust, sea salt, or water droplets, natural organic materials, smoke, pollen, spores, or bacteria, anthropogenic products of combustion such as, smoke, ashes, or dusts. Dust, 
cigarette smoke, mist from aerosol spray cans, soot or fumes in car exhaust.